Hey guys! So, we decided that we both had a book that each of us really, really, really needed to drop everything and read. So I turned to her and I was like, let's do a book swap! So um, this is part one of our crazy, awesome, super insane book swap. Woohoo! Mm. So this is my uh, choice for her to read, and it is my one of my all-time favorite books, Passage Home, also called The Wayward Tide by Allison McLeay. And look how big this is. It was 606 pages. And it was awesome, every single one of it. Did it in three days. <laughs> and it is, yeah, I read this when I was like 13 and I keep rereading it over the years because I just love it and so much happens in it that it's just rereadable and this is our spoiler filled review of this book. So now that that's out of the way, the plot! Okay, so our story starts in Newfoundland, a place that no stories really ever take place I know, place right? <laughs> and this is like a part in Canada's history when Newfoundland was actually part of the British colonies. And our hero, um, heroine, is, like, the whole story is kind of just about her life. Um, she's living in this one little town, and her mother and father have this really, really interesting relationship. They had moved to the colonies because they thought that there would be a good watchmaking market for her father to pursue his career in. They were so, so wrong. Nobody in this little, little town needs a watch. Um, but the mother is a total, total bitch. The mother is amazing. <laughs> I like, I lo like, I love to hate her. She was so fascinating. That woman was probably the most conniving, <laughs> brilliant genius in this entire book. Like, no one was on her level. I'm sorry. Like, this woman, she was, like, the top. Some of the things she does is, like, um, their family gets to the, the colonies and they're really, really poor, but she manages to claw her way up the social scale um, as Rachel's growing up. So, like, she goes from, like, running a general store to owning a general store to starting to, like, lend out money to, insurance. Uh, to um, basic insurance to more complicated insurance until she has this, like, empire when Rachel's, like, 15. <laughs> so, and she's just, like, shrewd. She's smart. She's, like, she's a bit of a bitch. She doesn't really care about her kids Anyone or her really. husband um when her husband gets in the way because he's got a drinking problem and he starts like embarrassing her in public she's like no honey don't go out drinking drink in the house and she gives him so much alcohol that and he you eventually just you gotta <laughs> take into account though that this is at a time where women weren't allowed to do what this woman is doing so everything she does has to be in the name of her husband mm -hmm. And just how she gets around <laughs> stuff was phenomenal. <laughs> Rachel's growing up in this, like, kind of non-loving atmosphere. She's kind of wild. She's not, like, your typical little girl for the time period. And one year, this ship gets wrecked in their hometown. And this... Most people die, but one man kind of survives with, like, a really bad injury. So he's in, like, the uh, healer's house and um she kind of befriends him like he kind of understands her love of nature and so she he he becomes her like special friend she's like seven hero it's it's hero worship basically. oh yeah um he eventually moves in with them uh there's a part where uh as a 13 year old i didn't get this so i went through the whole novel like shocked I, at this big revelation, because I was 13 and I didn't understand, but she picked it I up was right away. I got it. I got it. You're talking about the mom getting all dressed up nice to go for a walk with the guy. They ain't going for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> well, it took me, like, that one read to be like, oh, my God. <laughs> um, yeah, so the mother and him have an affair. Um, he eventually leaves because... The mother's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she ends up having another kid. Um, Rachel grows up. The mother has grown her empire. And um, so then we bring in our one of my love to hate characters, <laughs> Francis Ellis, the tutor. <laughs> Talk about Francis. Okay. So he's brought in to be a tutor for Rachel's brother. And he's a poet and an artist. And he has an artist's soul. And you know, 
he he writes poetry for Rachel and oh you know we're in love no 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 he ain't be writing her poetry he's actually stealing other poets poetry and like changing words but the thing is it comes to a point where it's like okay Rachel we have to talk talk like come with me Rachel and they start kissing and what does he do he takes his hand he sticks it up her shirt she squeaks the mother walks in <laughs> you're just spoiling my daughter I have plans for her Kicks, kicks him out, calls her daughter a slut, email, emails. <laughs> <laughs> Modern take, writes her sister in Liverpool, ships her, her daughter off to Liverpool because you know what? We're going to teach you how to be a lady. So when I want to marry you off to some insurance guy in St. John, you won't be broken or like spoiled because you're a slut. <laughs> Francis Ellis disappears. You thought you were done with him. <laughs> So Rachel goes off to England and she actually finds that she's pretty happy in her aunt's yeah. house. Her aunt is the wife of a sailor. He's, I love him. I know. He's he's like, um, he's Uncle Tom to mm -hmm. her. Um, and he's back every once in a while, but she keeps her aunt company and she spends about a year and a half in her aunt's company when who accidentally comes to call through some old friends, but Adam. This, Yay! The guy whose leg had her... And slept with her mother and yeah Yay, who she's totally and completely <laughs> madly in love with yay and her aunt wanting to <laughs> sabotage her sister and make sure they're alone together a lot yay <laughs> so it works out really well for rachel and of course adam is never in one place for very long his business has been concluded in england so he's going back to america um where he's lived on the frontier he's done fur trading just everything so Rachel gets this crazy idea to seduce him. Rachel, no. <laughs> so what does she do? She steals her aunt's nightgown and she her sexy nightgown. <laughs> you forgot to say sexy. It was French too. It was French and silky. Continue. So she sneaks into his hotel room, pretending to be his wife, and by this point, her reputation is just absolutely ruined. Yeah. And she convinces Adam that you know she could. She doesn't really convince him, but she kind of, like, bullies him into, you know... Taking her with him. Marrying, marrying her, her. And taking her with him to America. And the guy was trying to do the right thing the entire time. He was like, this is never going to work. But he was weak. <laughs> weak, man! <laughs> I don't know. That <laughs> silky nightgown. At that point, though, like, there was nothing he could do. <laughs> it was either so throw her to the river or... They, she gets... They, they get it on, her reputation is ruined, they go back to Anne's house, they get married really, really quick, and then they go to the U.S., and this is when everything really starts to go crazy. Um, so she gets to the frontier, it is nothing like she thought it was going to be. Absolutely nothing like she thought it was going to be. Um, she doesn't know how to cook, she doesn't know how to clean, she doesn't know how to put stuff away for the winter, she doesn't even know how to get clean water. So this is like a ginormous learning experience for her. But she's wandering around town one day. Um, she finally kind of gets used to the environment. She's finally, like, growing into herself. She's happy. She's slowly making decisions for herself. And who walks by in town? Francis Ellis. <laughs> Goes by Frank now. Frank Ellis runs the whorehouse down the road. <laughs> and does... <That's> so offensive. <laughs> he does. I know. I know. <laughs> Obviously, she wants nothing to do with him. Hey, Rachel. We're friends, right? Fuck you, and you Ellis. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> we can be good friends, right? So you have a kid now, right? <laughs> okay, so Adam keeps going on these long trips to make money and just because he needs to because that is... Reasons! Be well, he, well he, it's who he is. Yeah, it's who he is. He loves wide open spaces. He loves nature he hates the fact that people are slowly invading like the, the natural pristine world. natural world and there's kind of just this ever-present metaphor of people moving west and just the death of the natural forests and nature and untouched lands anyways so he goes off on these long adventures but then one day he just doesn't come back he's been gone for nine months and he's just kind of disappeared and you don't know really what's happened to him, but she's now suddenly all alone. And she tries to, she decides, okay, well, I have to go back to England. I can go live with my mother, or sorry, with my aunt. But you know what? I, I'm going to make money in a 
she can't afford to leave basically yeah. so she has to do whatever she can to make money so that she can leave and so that means taking odd jobs like sewing and getting a job at the general store but it's not making a lot of money <sighs> and so what she finally grows so desperate that when who walks in Frank Francis Ellis, Ellis. <laughs> and offers her a job singing at the trader's house aka the bar slash whorehouse she takes it um, so, in comes the personality of Madame Valentine. A name that's going to haunt <laughs> me for the rest of my life, basically. Um, <laughs> so, what happens in the trailer says? So, basically, she sings. She's actually, she actually kind of likes it. My favorite part, though, is because, like, you know, she's staying at her friend Lizzie's house. Owns, basically, this hotel kind of situation. But all the good women of independence <laughs> find out that Miss, uh, Mrs. Gaunt is, you know singing and shaking her butt in front of all these men. <laughs> so, oh, she can't stay here. She's not a good Christian woman. <laughs> so they kick her out. They're like, no, no, her son can stay. He shouldn't suffer for his mother's sins, but she needs to get out. <laughs> and so basically, she's getting there. She's get, she's saving up money. She's almost there. She's almost there. She's almost there. And then... Because life hates her, um, Frank Ellis, who has been trying to, like, get her to, I guess sleep with him slash a relationship slash I don't know what he wanted but um finally just almost rapes her yeah um she makes him go away but he's made it but he makes it very very clear that he can get at her whenever she wants so she freaks out she goes downstairs after one of her performances to confront him but she forgets that she was wearing her costume from stage and it results in an incident that ends up getting her shot um, so she wakes up, she's been saved, she's gonna be okay. They're gonna, like, accept her back in the, the house because I love Lizzie. She's just like, <laughs> you know, we almost lost her to sin, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> just like But best... we've got her back like a lamb to the fold. <laughs> Fuck all of Best you. logic ever. <laughs> those, who, those who are willing to change their ways and become better people are better off than the people who never face any hardship. Oh, take that! <laughs> oh, yes! Yeah. And so the, the town finally gets together and they run Frank, Frank Ellis, Ellis out, out of town. town. And it is so satisfying. So eventually she does get enough money. She heads home. She goes to her aunt's house again. She takes a job working where her uncle works. And she's basically in charge of like a relief fund to people who they're like husbands or family get lost at sea not a lot of money but enough to like kind of help them out and yeah so she can eventually maybe move out on her own and kind of be independent um <sighs> events conspire to throw her up against jonas oliver the man who owns the uh, the big giant shipping company and because she kind of stands up for what she wants she kind of gets his attention um she wasn't meaning to but, you know, it's just how things work out. I like him. You, you do, and you're supposed to, right? Like, I mean, he's problematic, but I like him. And he's supposed to be that, too. I mean, because the whole thing that they're going through through this book is that, like, Rachel is trying to find her independence, right? Mm -hmm. And as a widow, she's got a lot more independence than she does as a wife, uh, especially in this Victorian society. But then there are a lot of perks to being married aka stability and money and mm -hmm. and stuff like that especially if your husband is extremely <laughs> rich <laughs> so he ends up kind of proposing to her and she's like well i'm never gonna love him like i loved adam because she still loves adam and she still misses him but she's like this is good for matthew my son which we never mentioned sort of she has a kid by adam and so she's like okay this is good for him I'm going to marry Jonas Oliver. And she marries him. And she is not, like, oh, you can you kind of feel her, like, receding into herself. Like, she's not as vibrant as she was. She just, she kind of watches things go by versus actually taking a part in them for, like, most of her marriage to Jonas. And um, she has a couple kids with him. But then events conspire to throw her pleasant life back into chaos. When... Her a ship goes down. Her brother, who has come back, um, you know, runs into some trouble, but somebody helps him out. Good old Colonel Allen. And so he brings Colonel Allen with him. 
back to Liverpool. Colonel Allen buys the house next door. And she's kind of wandering on her merry way. She never really means to run into him, but she does. And it turns out that Colonel Allen is actually Adam Gaunt. What? (laughs) You bitch! (laughs) So... He literally up and left her in yeah, the middle of yeah. the frontier. And you know he he admits it too. He's like, Yeah, I left you. I had no like idea, like no plan to come back. And I'm just like you, Do you realize how much you've screwed this woman <laughs> over? And how even by coming back you've screwed her over <laughs> even more? You <laughs> asshole. You just get pissed. Oh my god. It took me like a few weeks through to realize as a kid just how much he fucked her over and how screwed she was and how lucky she was that she got out of there. Yeah. Because, like, what if she had died? Like, what would have had to happened to her kid? Yeah. He would have been fucked because yeah. there's no orphanage in Independence on the border nope. frontier to California. Like, nope. Nothing. He would have been fucked. Also, the fact that her relationship, well, not her, her standing, her social standing is completely screwed because she's now married twice. And... Him being alive basically nullifies her current marriage to Jonas. And if anybody finds that out, basically she's out having sex out of wedlock. And, and her she, two kids are bastards. Because she's had two other she, kids. Yeah. So just life is screwed up. But And she she admit, she goes to him and she's like, I'm sorry I didn't wait long mm-hmm. enough. And he was just like, well, I was never eh. coming back, so... Good on you for leaving. But guess what? Now I am in love with you, so we're gonna go to we're gonna go away together, or else I'm gonna fucking ruin your life. And I'm just like, ah! <laughs> uh, <laughs> but who else is back, Chelsea? Frank Ellis. <laughs> no. And why is Frank Ellis back? Because her mother, Rachel's mother, has realized that Rachel's actually doing quite well for herself, so she's taken it upon herself to make Rachel's life a living hell. I'm going to ruin everything. And Rachel accidentally gives away that Adam Gaunt is still alive. So her mother has the means to screw her over whenever the fuck she wants. But something good kind of happens, and by that, Jonas dies. <laughs> um, Jonas has become obsessed with this one ship called the Altair. It's a steamer. Um, and it is like the first big steamer ever kind of thing. Like nobody has built a steamer like this. They've all been like paddle wheels, which don't do very well in the ocean. This thing will like shrink the ocean. That's how big it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's trying to get it together, but he just works himself to death. Mm-hmm. And so this ship is now in danger and Rachel just kind of takes it on and she's like, hey, you know what? I can do this. I know every, I've learned kind of everything about ships from Jonas. I can fucking do this. This is going to be my ship. She takes after her mother and just like owns the whole po- like politics of the company. Just goes and she befriends all the people working on the ship because she says, "Oh yeah, I know what you're like. I know what you're doing." And they're like, "Uh huh." And she's like, "Oh no, this, this, and this." And they're like, "Oh, you actually do? Okay, yeah, we'll give you a trip to her." And so she just works crazy to get this ship together so that it works. <sighs> And it does. It like, does, yeah. The king, or, um, yeah, king Albert. Pr- the prince. prince. Yeah, sorry. Prince Albert, like, comes and launches the ship, and it's a big thing. And the ship is out for its trial run when it accidentally gets stranded. Stranded. It's kind of implied that someone did it on purpose. No. Well, maybe. It's kind of, they, they don't directly say, but Uncle Tom makes this comment offhand where it's just like, yeah, you know, some companies, oh yeah, they uh, they'll put someone on their ship to drill holes in the side so that it'll tank, and then they basically make money off of the insurance instead of having to like deal with the, yeah. the failure. And it's never said that that's what's happened, but she's been fighting they... these people in this company for so long. <laughs> Freaking George, I know you did it. I know this is your fault. Ah! They were also like, it could have been the compass too. Like all this metal yeah. on a ship might have fucked with the compass. Well, I don't I, know. I blame George. <laughs> that's the way you're going. I'm blaming George. Okay. So it. So she. She was like, okay, fine. Um, we need a giant tugboat that's going to be able to pull this ship out of the harbor. Who owns the best tugboat? It's Adam. Adam owns the best <laughs> tugboat. And at this point, she has told him that, like, she wishes he was dead. Yeah. So, like, relationship over. So we all go out on this tugboat to tug the boat. Um, they try and stop her. She's like, nope, nope, my, my boat. Ship. My <laughs> boat. <laughs> like, you have some, like, Mal Reynolds. Like, level <laughs> obsession from her about this ship. Like, 
just like nope <laughs> and so they go out on this ship and of course um they end up like saving it they're bringing it back on its own power even like that's how okay it is and they're on the ship and of course she and Alan, adam just start having these moments again where she's like showing the person that he kind of fell in love with where she's independent and she's got her own dreams and goals and that's who he fell in love with and she ultimately tells him no yeah but a few days later when the ship is about to launch she gets this call where she's like oh you have to come talk to this rich passenger because reasons and oh you know no the ship actually launches at this time so you know you've got tons of time get on board and then of course the ship pulls out and she's stuck on the ship with Adam. Because her entire family <laughs> and her <laughs> servants all planned against her to trap her on the ship so she and Adam can, like, fix their relationship. <laughs> and he's like, well, you know, you can always go back in, like, three days before it heads to New York. But, you know, let's work this out. And so by the time that she gets to the end of three days, she's decided, no. Stay on the ship. Because, and she's like, the ending line all kind of got to me this time because it's like all this time it was like a widow can do whatever she pleases and it always sounded kind of happy to me but this time it really was like no but she was doing so well on her own why does she need this like she's kind of like trapped again and it was just kind of a really interesting dynamic for me on this read through so anyways what did you think i did really like it i think my major problem was in the last third, when the mother first comes back, it's very kind of like mustache twirly villainy because she's trying when she's trying to ruin Rachel. I'm just like, why are we <laughs> wasting energy, you crazy woman? <laughs> well, I mean, I guess if you look at her and Rachel as like foils to one mm. another, though, it makes kind of sense because the mother has like nothing to live for anymore. Like, at that point, it just like the way it's reintroduced, I just felt it was very kind of contrived. I mean, it makes sense, but it was just yeah. kind of like, Hwa! Yeah. <laughs> what more problem? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, Adam really pissed me off. <laughs> I did not like that she went back to him. I mean, you were doing so well, and he's a dick. How do you know that he's not going to leave you? Oh, well, you know, the wild work. There's not really much wild left. You know those people. But the point is, she doesn't need him anymore. I know. She doesn't need him anymore. And that's why he loves her. <laughs> I'm sorry. I guess I hold grudges. If you're going to leave me alone in the freaking... American frontier in a small town called Independence with nothing. I don't know if I can trust you again. I think I'd be a little bit skeptical. Hey, hon, I'm going to go grab the paper at the corner <laughs> store. Going to take you nine months? <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. I'm glad it makes you angry. <laughs> I'm sick of these stupid romantic relationships that... Do not make sense when you actually start thinking about them. She tried really hard. Though. I know she did. And I know the big <laughs> argument would be, hey, she forced him into marrying her. I don't care. <laughs> Marriage vows, people, aren't they supposed to mean something? Mm. <laughs> also, Frank Ellis, you're a bitch. Thank you. <laughs> But if it's getting you guys worked up, I think it's a damn good book, huh? It is a very good book. I did really, really like it. You said there was a sequel. I'm tempted to read it, just not yet, because I don't want to carry around another 600 big page tome with me. That was fun. I felt like I could hurt someone <laughs> sitting there on my, my bus rides. It's just, uh... And there's so much detail that we actually left out. Yes. Um, there's so much symbolism. Um, that, that was like a mild spoiler view. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's a native guy running around. Smoke. Watches smoke. Watches smoke. Uh, there's a uh, uh, blue, blue. Antoine Blue. Antoine Blue. So Why didn't sweet. you marry him? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Uh, no. uh, oh. There's, like, the kids. There's her brother, Ruben, who becomes a major character. Her um, son. Matthew. Um, there's just so much going on in this book that you can read it over and over and over again and come out with something different every time. Um, it's a long read, but every, every, like, chapter, every scene gives you something and you're always looking forward to the what happens next, what happens next. And, oh, I just love it and I want more people to read it. Still mad about Adam. You can be mad about Adam. That would be my t-shirt. 
still mad about Adam. That's the next book, too. Matthew is still mad about Adam. Oh, I was just like, does he leave again? <laughs> does he leave again? <laughs> I was just like... <sighs> Those who ignore history are doomed to repeat it. <laughs> so, yes. Go read this book. You cannot find it in the bookstore. That's the one thing. You have to find it on, like, Abe's book or Better World books or somewhere. Um, it, it's a hard book to find. But read it. Love it. Enjoy it. It is one of the best Victorian but Victorian fictions that I have ever picked up. It was written in the 90s. The author, unfortunately, passed away. Apparently, it was a big seller in the 90s. It got, like, printed a hmm. thousand copies, something like that. But I've never met anybody else who's ever heard of it. I have now! Yes! There's two And of us. so have you. <laughs> so I guess we're going to leave it there. All right, guys. See you later. <laughs>